I will just add that we've been saying this for weeks now, but this is not the time for us to let up and allow for COVID-19 to catch us slipping. We have uh, to continue to be vigilant. Uh, we have to be vigilant. Uh, that is our only um, hope in this battle with this, this, this disease. And that means you have to continue to wash your hands regularly, to uh, wear your face covering, and also to watch your distance, the three W's right there. And so um, I know that um, obviously we are, I continue to stay uh, concerned about the future. Um, we all should be. Um, but I know that if we follow those three W's, every single person in this team project, that we will do our best we can to get through this pandemic together. So with that, we'll take some questions. Brad? Yeah, um, you know, we've, I mean, you spoke about it in the beginning. Yeah. We've had too many children and teenagers that have been victims of shooting crimes in the city. On the heels of that, um, do you feel that RPD has the tools necessary to help curb this, stop this? And, you know, to those who have been saying lately we need to defund the police, what, what's your message to them? Well, I do believe that uh, the Richmond Police Department has the tools to combat this. The number one tool, the number one asset to uh, solving crimes like this, uh, that number one asset is the, is the community, right? And so if you see something, you have to say something. Uh, that allows us to get these sort of wrongdoers off the street. Uh, there could be more tools. Um, I thought I, I applaud the General Assembly what they did this past General Assembly session, but I do believe that we need stronger and even tougher laws on, um, on the possession of a, of a gun, an illegal weapon, uh, just to stop the, um, the inundation uh, of these weapons in, uh, low, uh, in, in our most vulnerable communities. And so um, I'm asking the General Assembly to do even more in the upcoming session, uh, not the special session, but the upcoming uh, regular session. And when it comes to um, funding the, the Richmond Police Department, um, I, in my roughly five plus years in, in government, I've never seen an agency become better and more effective with slashing budgets. Um, here in Richmond, we are going to fund the reforms, the reforms that come out of the work that the, um, uh, the task force on reimagining public safety will do. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fund the reforms, uh, and uh, I just don't believe slashing budgets uh, also slashes systemic racism that might be found in an agency. Uh, Eric, uh, you started off again with the recent shootings. This, you know, we saw a three-year-old last month. We saw a 15-year-old. You seem kind of heavy. Is your heart heavy hearing all of this news, all of this violence, and once again having to, how does this affect you personally? Um, it does affect me personally. I mean, you, you, what, what sense does it make that a two-year-old or a three-year-old or five-year-old is shot? That doesn't give any sort of, uh, that doesn't comfort anyone that their, child, their children are in danger, um, particularly in a time where our kids have to be at home right now, right? They have to be at home. And if home, being at home, isn't a sanctuary, then all of us are unsafe. Um, and so, yes, um, when I hear of these stories or when I reach out and have to, you know, thank God she's going to be okay. But um, it is, um, it does, it does reach deep inside of you and uh, it touched places that you know, I've never been touched before in terms of, you know, remember we dealt with the Marquia Dixon uh, um, murder uh, maybe a year or so plus ago, uh, and that uh, touched me deeply, right? You know, a kid being in a park and losing your life, uh, just doing what kids do. And the last thing a child should have to worry about is whether or not in their home or the proximity of their home that 
a bullet could come flying through uh, a wall or a window or anything of the sort. So, yeah, you're right. It, it's, um, it is tough. It is tough. But uh, I, I want to just make sure that um, the family uh, involved knows that, you know, we're going to do everything we can to find who did this. I'm sure there's a number of factors involved when uh, looking at our crime statistics this year. Um, I think crime generally across the country uh, is down, and I'm glad to see the same thing here in Richmond as well. However, there's just too many instances, I think, of this recklessness in terms of gun violence in, in neighborhoods, uh, in our most vulnerable neighborhoods. And so uh, uh, although those statistics may uh, comfort some, uh, there are a lot of people who still have to deal with just the, the constant gun violence that occurs in neighborhoods like um, you know, we see in the East and in parts of Southside. And so um, I, I believe the pandemic plays a role, but I'm sure there's also a number of factors that I can't really pull for you right now. Joanna, do you have a question? Uh, the question is, uh, do I have any more details about the antigen testing, where it will be available, and how it will be distributed across the state? Um, I, I don't currently. I think we're just so much at the front end of, of the contract with Beckton Dickinson, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't even have a sense of a timeline at this point. Um, I, the real benefit of antigen testing is that it's rapid, and so you get a, a result within generally 15 to 20 minutes. Um, there are some downsides to antigen testing, and hopefully, you know, in my comment about antigen testing having gotten better over, over the months that they've been working on the sensitivity and specificity, um, you know, right now, antigen testing is very helpful in identifying a positive case in, in somebody who either has been exposed or is showing symptoms. Um, I think we'll, we'll want to see some improvement in terms of what a negative test means and, and feeling a sense of confidence that that, that is actually negative. So um, no, no specific answers to the question, but I do think it's an important addition to the overall testing landscape. Criticized, criticized uh, publicly for not having the back of Richmond Police Department during the protest, and publicly criticizing officers accused of wrongdoing, but not publicly acknowledging when they have been cleared of wrongdoing. So if you could just respond to that. Um, yeah, as the mayor of the city, it's my job to, um, to ensure that we uh, provide public safety to each and every one. And the Richmond Police Department wakes up every day to answer that call. And uh, they do a good job in doing so as well. And they have a record of that. Uh, my job also as a mayor is to ask tough questions too of all my agencies. And that's exactly what I do for whether it's Parks and Recreation or Public Works or of uh, the Richmond Police Department. And I will continue to do that because uh, it's my job to ask tough questions, but also to uh, hold each department to uh, a high standard, a high standard of expectations. Uh, we, this administration has done that. And um, there are obviously ongoing investigations uh, that still continue, um, whether it's internally or uh, with the Commonwealth's attorney. And those investigations will uh, play, this, play itself out. And then once we are done with that, there will be accountability. I think that's what the public expects from every Richmond City 
public employee. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you all coming. Uh,